Hello and welcome to another episode of Cybermasters. Having a little audio issue today, but we're back online. How you doing? It's not coming through. Uh, give it a second. <laughs> you came through. Yeah, no, yeah, I forgot good. about the delay. Welcome to Cybermasters. Uh, another episode with my good friend Rick Navone. Going to be talking about uh, space stuff today. The Artemis One uh, launch or the lack, lack of, of launching yeah, that lack took thereof, place, yeah. you know, that wasn't too good there. Yeah, we had a uh, little issue happen. Had a little issue take place we'll there. We'll talk about the issue and catch everybody up on what happened. Yeah, uh, pretty rough stuff there. And uh, we're going to be talking about stuff that's happening on Earth here, which is these school attacks that keep coming. It's like, you know, we're building all this space stuff, and on the other hand, you have these schools and all our kids being affected by cybercrime. Well, because what the heck cybercrime is, is financially rewarding. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's face it. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got these, you've got insurance, cyber insurance, right? And the only purpose of cyber insurance is to pay the person that hacked you. Yes. Right? That's the only reason why you have cyber insurance. Exactly. Is like to pay the person that hacked you so that they, they, they send you a key so you can unlock your files, right? Yes. And it keeps going on and on. They don't stop. Isn't that brilliant? I mean, think about it. Like, okay, I'm going to just keep on paying the insurance. I, 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 on a philosophical level, I don't believe in cyber insurance. Why are they spending so much money on uh, space and all of this stuff when our kids are being so deeply affected by you guys cyber you, attacks. You didn't right? listen to Elon Musk? How we have to get off the planet, become a multi-planet species? Is that going to stop the kids from getting hacked? Well, listen, you know, we, if we get hit by an asteroid, you know, a, a sizable thing, you know, let's say the, si uh, say the size of, I don't know, uh, the, the Roman Colosseum. Okay. Okay? We could seriously be in a lot of trouble as a, as a race, okay? Hmm. And when you look at the maps of, you go to spaceweather.com, you ever mm -hmm. hear that yes, website? Yes, Spaceweather.com has got a, uh, a map, an interactive map, of all of the near-Earth asteroids that we know about. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen that map? Yes, yes, there's a lot I mean, of them. It's literally scary. Yeah. yeah it's, like, it's amazing we don't get hit 600 times a day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I it, it's it's not a matter of when it's a, ma it's a matter of when not a matter of if mm. we are going to get hit by something really big sooner or later and if we're not you know if we don't plant our seed in more than one place i think elon's right if we don't plant our seed in more than one place we could be setting ourselves up to be like you know okay there was this great race of humans that used to live on this planet they ain't here no more uh, long now gone. it's the bees and the cockroaches you know? <laughs> Well, they say what uh, that the cockroaches will survive the longest, right? And bees, you know, they're, they're, they're survivors too because they're smart. You know, they're like like Borg from Star Trek. You know, mm. they just like you know they do everything like like machines. Wasn't there a thing where bees were uh, going extinct for a couple of years? And it's it, really it's weird. Like There's crazy. a lot of different things going on with bee population. If you uh, if you heard about the Africanized bees in uh, taking taking over in the Midwest, mm -hmm. there's a guy on TikTok um, called uh, the the Killer Bee Guy, right? Okay. And I, I follow him, and he comes up in my feed, you know, and it's like these. Uh, killer bees, they, they, they call them Africanized bees, are just like regular honeybees, but they got some kind of DNA bug in them, and they are mean, and they attack, and they kill people. I mean, like, literally... they don't come to the United States, jeez. They, they, they are in the United States. Okay. They're all over the, the Southwest, um, and they're spreading. And it's only a matter of time before they get to be everywhere. Okay. You know, and and okay. they'll figure out how to live through the cold winter months. Right now, they're not so good at that. But, you know, give them a couple of generations. Oh, and think we'll about it. A, show a bee generation is, what, three weeks? Really, yeah. You know, so really. it's only a matter of time before they start get you know, like figuring out how to hibernate and things like that, like other bees do mm -hmm. up here in New York. Mm -hmm. um, That's very interesting. Yeah, people don't really recognize that. Yeah. Uh, let's jump into the show a little bit here. Um, let's talk well, about this school stuff before we talk about what's going on in space. Both super interesting subjects, actually. Uh, let's just hit the cyber news here and talk about this last huge cyber attack on it's, L.A., it's right? It's time for Ed Cyber News. There we go. I love that. And uh, take a look at this, guys. It's the article about uh, L.A. school district getting hacked. And uh, it became a really huge situation, actually, right? So um, if you take a look, uh, the FBI, DHS, and the local police got involved. And um, there was a hack. It was pretty big. Uh, the White House 
assembled an entire group of uh, uh, officials to, mm -hmm. to really thwart this and create some kind of standard of how schools should react. Um, I find it really interesting, actually. If you take a look at this article, uh, they've come up with a couple of points that are that are critical of, of, of things that have to be done. Mm -hmm. So um, the White House got involved. They got... Uh, so you know everything's going to be fine, right? So everything's going to be fine. No, it's very high profile, which is good because I think that... Yeah, so uh, Biden and his crew get to take credit for any good things that yeah, happen. Yeah, you, you, right? you, but you want you want this to, to be exposed. It's, it's important stuff. So... Um, what needs to be done is uh, proper data governance and uh, stewardship. I mean, mm -hmm. these uh, database people and, and network people and, and server people that, that work in these environments literally take no ownership of mm -hmm. their own environment. Mm -hmm. They have no idea mm -hmm. if there are holes. They've, you know, there's probably a security audit that gets done, and what do they do? They fill out the form, they submit it to the auditors. The auditors go, "Looks good to me." Yeah, and but that's Rick, hold, it. hold on. You and I know a lot of responsible um, IT directors who take it very. We personally. do know a lot. You and I do know a lot of responsible IT people. How many IT people do we, do we know too? Well, like you know, the the union guys. They like they go in, they show up, they have their coffee, and then they don't really work. Well, I, I know guess, a lot of them I guess too. the public isn't realize that the majority of guys are like that and don't take full ownership. How do you know? How can you tell when an engineer is going to take full ownership of a project? I don't know when you. Um, how about you know make it so that if you're going to take this job and there's a breach, you're going to be held criminally responsible for it. I think that will help a lot, okay? But they can't do that. You know, if a breach happens, it's ar you could argue the point in court. Like, I could actually sit there and, and make a case for it being the network security person's right. fault, that it's really because of them that it happened. They allowed that to come mm -hmm. into their network, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You could argue that. Like, you, mm -hmm. you could argue anything. I mean, just ask a Democrat. But the the point is, is that you could, the, the case yes. could be made that yes. you could blame them. But that is, that's not happening. But but the the internal I know, IT I'm not guy, advocating to blame them. The internal IT guy already feels they're always going to be blamed no matter what. Because I think that's general. Because you already feel, in the most cases, feel that like they're overworked, underappreciated. You know, let's face it. In most companies, you know, like the owner of the company treats the IT guys like he's a janitor. That's and and I'm not saying there's anything wrong being a janitor either. But you know what I'm saying? Right. It's, it's a noble uh, type of work. But the point is, you know. We study really hard. There's always new stuff coming out, always new technology hitting, hitting the pavement. Okay. We've got to stay on top of everything, right? And there's, from a lot of people, we're really looked at with a lot of contempt and disrespect. Look at the breaches that are occurring. I mean... Not where I work, by the way. I love where I work, and I'm not going to talk about that, but I'm just saying. But if, if you look at the breaches watching, that are occurring, you can just imagine what the non-technical leadership is imagining is, is really going yeah, on. Yeah, because they, you know, think, like, we were talking about it before. Right? Yes. That I made the point that most non-technical people think what we do is freaking voodoo. They think we walk in, we shake a Harry Potter magic wand at something, and poof, it works. I love the IT Harry Potter magic wand. That's the best one. Yeah. Yeah. How about the uh, that uh, old skill in Saturday Night Live with the impatient IT guy? Oh, okay, let me put the keyboards for you. And I'll show you how that it. Car is a fabulous. It was great. Skit. It was great because a lot of IT guys <laughs> like that. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. Who's the computer guy? He's like move. Yeah, yeah. You like sit down, like get out of my way, and you like type real fast and tell nobody what he's doing. But no, but we weren't the, we weren't the end user, like the person using the computer to do their mm -hmm. daily work. That really don't know much about computers. But we weren't that person that said, "Oh, I want an Xbox. Let me click on that," and all of a sudden now every freaking file on the entire network is encrypted, <laughs> and nobody's got the key. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, it's going to cost you fifty thousand bitcoins. That was amazing when they started coming out when when they were doing these hacks. But but let me just tie back. <laughs> right into this for a moment um 
if you take a look what the FBI, DHS, and the probe in this whole thing have come up with, mm -hmm. with these bullet points, I really want to highlight this in the LA Times uh, write-up. Um, when the district acknowledged the attack, officials also announced an array of measurements to improve cybersecurity going forward. Yeah, I wonder what they're doing. These measurements, the district said, have been taken, will be taken immediately, or will have been implemented as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Now, the well, reason I'm mentioning they, that they put is because everybody's got information technology task force. You know these guys are just going to come up with, like, like, worthless things for them to spend their time doing. Well, if you read further in the article, too, <laughs> and uh, we have a guest in-house here who's watching, who knows about this, all the projects that are going to be done, they're scheduled to be done in the future, unresolved upgrades that are hanging loose over there. And are not so going to um, I just want to talk about these for a moment, right? So the list includes... Um, Setting up an independent information technology task force. That's exactly what we need. We a need second that. one to pay for the first one to check. The, the second guy to pay check for the first guy. I always say it's a good idea to put a second set of eyes on I, 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 I necessarily don't agree. I think that the second person should be a security officer, not necessarily a second IT task force, but, but a security uh, group that does it separately, exactly. you know? Exactly, exactly. You know what I mean? Um, number two, deploying technical staff across the vast school system to assist with issues arising in the coming days. That's called the help desk. And isn't that called a red team? Isn't that a, well, no, I guess what's the post cleanup what are team? These, what are they supposed to do? Um, they're supposed to assist people to get back to where they were before and keep working. Isn't that something that's um, like something that you should be able to do in a couple of days? Well, that's what they're saying. Out of the 50,000 people, you put this task force together to kind of normalize them getting back he, together. Because teachers have complained it wasn't uh, it wasn't perfect when they got back. There was delays. Not I want you to log on. I, I want you to keep going and finish up this list. T t tell the audience about the, the rest of the bullet points. Okay. I want you to finish this Num up number three. I can't wait to attack this. Reorganizing departments and systems to build coherence and bolster data safeguards, which is something I always talk about, Holy which is the uh, classification of data, right? You've got your sales data, you've got your teacher data, you've got your marketing data, and it's all separated. Um, next, appointing an expert technology advisory council, a, thir a third group, mm -hmm. and naming a technology advisor who will focus on security procedures. Now, um, notice before I said put a security officer in, ta in, in place. I necessarily don't agree with the second IT task force, but maybe an overlaid outsourced uh, supplemental team. Good. Let's do what the government always does. We make more layers and make more, make it more complicated for the IT guys to get anything done, and that'll make it all better. Yeah, but look at it. It does make sense to add a security person who's checking the IT guys. It, makes, it, it makes sense to, let's, to, to bring in an outside entity to do a security audit. Twice a year. Twice a year audit. Good point. You want to get crazy? Do it three Good times point. a year. Good Do point. it quarterly. Okay? But an advisory council? Mm. That's just going to be like a bunch of people getting in the way of anything moving forward. Well, well, you know, uh, the grants got to go to somebody. So, you know, uh, I mean, see, you know, the grants got to get paid, right? People, people got to get paid. <laughs> uh, add, oh, adding budget dollars as needed for improving employee training. Yes. Never going to work. Well, uh, but, but hold on. Training, as training. you know, has been the biggest problem from the beginning. Okay. Users you're aren't working properly. You're going to train people who refer to computers and cell phones and things like that as blinky things. <laughs> Because they're a lawyer or a doctor or they've got a master degree in, in like uh, Elizabethan poetry or something yeah, like that. Yeah, but training is the, where the problem is. People are falling for these scams. They're not doing it right. Training is where it's at. <coughs> if you make an incentive for your employees to eat up the training, now you, you, make, you incentivize that. And yeah, you got something there. But they ain't never going to do that. Mm -hmm. You like that kind of English? Ain't mm -hmm. never going to do that? They ain't never going to do that. ain't never going to do that. Well, you're I, a I professor, just, so... I ain't got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Uh, <laughs> and it is, it is like I love this because we had to throw another bullet point in there. Yes, yes. The Analyzing final. systems to help from federal and state law enforcement. Well, that's a good one. That's your annual checks you were talking about now. From federal and state law enforcement. Do you realize that it just said federal law enforcement is going to reach down into your school or your town or your entity? No, 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 no. It should not come from, fed from the federal level. It should come from the state level. And it should always come from the state level. I'm a federalist. I'm a, I believe in the constitutional republic. I do not believe the federal government's got any business in my computer systems. If I'm running a school, uh, uh, a school system or uh, some kind of, you know, entity like that, like like a town. But it's a cooperative thing, even in this article. It starts as cooperative, and before you know it, you're being told what to do. Okay? That's, that's what I'm saying, okay? You, you open up that door. You let these people in, and before you know it, you, you're taking orders from them, okay? I still... But the White House has signed the DHS, all these people, local authorities, and people okay. from the school district to work as a team is a group effort to create a model for the country. Okay, kids. Listen carefully to what I have to say, okay? You can avoid all of this horse hockey by doing a couple of simple things. Okay. First of all, back up your data. Yeah. Make yeah. sure you're backed up. Perform restores weekly. Do tests. You have a server. That's that. If it if it gets hacked, or if if the files get encrypted, if someone launches an attack on you, could you stand that server up in another box somewhere else today? Non-technical leaders think this is taking place. And they don't realize that half of these things are hanging in updates and upgrades that have not you been performed yet. You could sit there and yet. talk about all you want. The upgrades I'm not really concerned about. Look, most of most entities, like uh, a school district or a hospital, they've got ancient, I'm not going to say legacy, I'm going to say like ancient, like go back to the ancient Sumerians. Mm. They've got batch scripts running on their servers that were written in like 1911, okay? okay? And they ain't getting upgraded because nobody wants to invest anything into like, like let's create an API, let's put it out in, in containers and Kubernetes and Docker and things like that. Because when they say, how much is that going to cost? They go, huh? Mm. No, it's fine the way it is. Mm. We can still run on this, right? Mm. Yes, yeah, yeah, so you have legacy systems year and year. You ain't upgrading. You can sit there and try to make yourself believe you're upgrading. You're not. You're not going to. So are you, are you saying that regardless of the task force, the day-to-day -day IT items still have to get done? Well, they do have on the list that get a second group to help you. <laughs> Look, you know, now, I'm, now here's, here comes the part of the show where I'm going to talk about a third-party product and not get not get paid for the endorsement, okay? Because I seriously, we both should make a little bit of money from this. <laughs> it's coming. It's um, coming. I remember when Dave Bricker, your IT guy, um, turned me on to the sys uh, data data systems. And I know there's competing competing systems. Sure, sure. Okay. Price point is very aggressive. But price price point is like amazing. And when I saw it, and I actually worked with it, it was like working with Star Trek level technology. It, this thing is a server, it's an appliance that lives in your data center. Or you can buy it as a cloud service. So they've got these two different packages. If you need the appliance in your data center, great. If you want it as a cloud service, as a SaaS solution, you can do it and just run it out of the cloud. Mm -hmm. It backs up your servers into a virtual server, and it's its own hypervisor. So it's like you can stand that server up inside of that box, and you don't need your VMware, your, your Hyper-V, you don't need anything else. You can stand it up right there. If your server gets hacked and you got the appliance, in seconds you can egg timer that thing back to before the thing happened, catch it, destroy it, launch the server. Most end users won't even know anything happened. Okay? So what happened in LA? What, why was well, it? Well, we didn't have problem? any such thing. Now, 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 one more thing about this data system where you guys were all like going like, I'm going to make a million dollars on this. You know, 
when the thing gets backed up to the appliance or in the cloud, it goes to two separate data centers out in the United States, mm -hmm. one on the East Coast, one on the West mm -hmm. Coast. If we get attacked on the East Coast, we still got the data in the West Coast, okay? And so well, but getting your data back will take a little while to get down in the cloud, but your data, your data is safe. And you've got snapshots of that data from like in minute increments. Increments like fifteen. Can that increments. be done from small to large? Is that across the board? You can, you can do it if you're J.P. Morgan. You could do it if you got two servers and you're running a deli. But people aren't doing it, and they get jammed up like the school district all day and night. Well, right? How many? How many people have you ever known that lost their hard drive on their personal computer and absolutely went out of their minds? Like literally, like wanted to commit suicide <laughs> because they lost their hard drive. Yeah, I know. You know, they, they, their collection of pornography or something. <laughs> uh, listen, listen, I, I don't judge. <laughs> my, my point is, is that you, from this very simple standpoint, you buy a new personal computer today. Every single one of them has a BIOS built into the into that machine that allows you to put two hard drives in there. Mm. We're talking about out in the uh, outside before. Mirror the hard drives. If one of the hard drives crashes, you have the other hard drive. Yeah, yeah. And a little thing beeps at you and goes, you know, the one hard drive died, you might want to replace it. <laughs> but your data's still there. You're Once, just talking about being responsible listen, in your job. I mean, you're just talking about... I mean, even from a personal standpoint, go buy a USB backup drive and do the one-touch backup once a month. Mm -hmm. right? Set a reminder in this stupid thing you got called mm -hmm. a cell phone. Set a reminder. I have this thing reminding me of everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good point. It tells me when to tie my shoes. Good point. Good right? point. Right. And just say, okay, time to do the backup. Right. And what I do with some things is I put a second reminder in. I know you didn't do it the first time, so do it now, kind of thing. So talking back about the school district yeah. here, where did everything fall down? Where it became the example of the United States on this? Resting on their laurels, thinking everything's fine, right? Oh, yeah, we're, we're fine. We're passing compliance checks. Yeah, you're passing well, will, checks. You're will, out forms. will the White House and all <coughs> the DHS being involved, making this news make a difference Hell this no. time? Why won't it make a difference this time? You just, like I said, you're just adding more government layers. It's not going to help anything. It but never isn't did. the awareness the thing. Isn't the awareness here going to produce something bigger? Oh, look, they okay. got hacked now, again. Let me, let me ask you a question. The last time government intervention worked, ever, Okay, is when John F. Kennedy said, let's go to the moon in 1962, and by 1969, uh, we had three guys heading up to the moon. Okay, it's the last time it worked. Since then, when has it ever been a positive thing where the government says, we got this, we'll take care of it for you, don't worry, it's going to be taken care of. Six years later, they go, well, you know, we're still in the planning stages. <laughs> Well, even the Artemis. We're still trying to figure out what kind of pencils we're going to use. Let, let, let's jump right into the Artemis conversation. Um, Absolutely. Hit my tech news here. Tech news coming up about the Artemis. So, what would you like to talk about? All right. Uh, <laughs> well, quite a bit of things here. Um, let me pull this up so we have it on it was, screen. Everybody was so excited for this launch. I mean, it was. It I was, was. I literally had it streaming on like two monitors in my office. Oh, man. And, and the second they, they, they talked about uh, a leak in the, uh, was the O2 uh, uh, pipe yeah. going down to the engine, that, that third engine, I was like, nope, we ain't launching today. I just knew it. You know, I was like, you can sit there and talk about it all you want, but you know, you're, losing, you're losing viewers like crazy. Mm -hmm. It's over. Um, you got to remember something that this is a highly highly complicated thing and okay. we were talking another thing we were talking about before yeah yeah when they did the apollo missions they never wrote anything down that's messed up i mean they, they wrote some stuff down but they didn't have like a documentation plan or a documentation manager mm. that made sure hey you know you're building this thing called a cup it's got to go into the, the schmiggin and you gotta <laughs> have a schmiggin. you gotta have a thing you gotta you gotta show me a document how it works you gotta you, you gotta <laughs> document this yeah. and, and my job i've got to document everything yes if i change a character in a description of an item mm -hmm. in my Active Directory, mm -hmm. I got out a ticket for it and screenshots showing what was done. Mm. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but you know what? 
Six months later, you're going to remember you did any of that shit. Mm, okay, yeah, that's a good point. And if someone's asking you, if someone's asking you about it, you can go back, look at the ticket, and go, "Yeah, that was me. I, I did that." So, so it, let's describe what happened. This is a really interesting article. So, it was planned to go up uh, a couple of we- a couple of days ago, a couple of days and ago. there was a. A problem the first time, and it was apparently a sensor issue. What happened there? The first it was a, a combination of things. It was, looked like a sensor issue, but it was also a leak. Okay. Okay. So what they ended up doing is they overpressurized the uh, O2 uh, container. Okay. Okay. Now, right there, you're talking about when you say overpressurization, that could have blown the rocket up. Gotcha. Because because okay. first was a bad sensor in there. Okay. Right. And it, it was like, I think the, the official scrub time was about 11 o'clock, a little bit, bit after 11. Okay, yeah. And like, it was like 9 o'clock in the morning, and I, and I was watching it on the internet, because, you know, NASA was streaming it, you know, and you know, having uh, people come in and talk and stuff. It's, you know, it's really cool that we watching the NASA cast. Um, but at 9 o'clock, I was like, there's no way this thing's launching. Wow. I mean, I hate to be right all the time, but I, I, you know, I was right about that. So then, then they tried it again a couple of days later, and there was a, a real fuel leak at that point. Yeah, they so tried to repair. They tried it. They yeah. t- right for a couple of hours, yeah. right? Bubble gum and scotch tape just doesn't work with some things, you know. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. Works with works with some works with school districts data centers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. It doesn't work with this stuff. <laughs> all right. Um. So. What they were trying to avoid was having to cart the thing back to the assembly building. Exactly, which, which they ended up having they had to do. do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's just no way around it. Yeah, you, know, you, you can't work on you know a, a rocket engine out yeah. on the gantry. Yeah. It's just not possible. So, and they say here the work will be done uh, at the Kennedy Space Center. Mm-hmm. So the thing had to be lugged back mm-hmm. to the construction site or the yeah the, the staging had site, to if you back will. Over, yep. And uh, and and now they're going to try again in uh, what was it the nineteenth? What was the new date there? Oh, it was looking towards the end of September, right? The nineteenth, twentieth, or something okay. like that. Right, right. Um, it, this look, I I agree with the way NASA is looking at this. Okay. Even though there's no people on this thing, we don't want it blowing up. Makes sense. We got a mission. Yes. Okay? Uh, this mission is you know it's got um, mannequins that are going to be. <laughs> Have sensors on them, okay? You know, to see like you know how the ride was, kind of thing. Nice, nice, like the driving dummies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, what Elon Musk like launched his car out in the space. I think nice. there was a mannequin in it or okay. something like that. Yes. Um, there's um, this. It, what I think they could have done, they could have taken advantage of something. They could have deployed the first module of the space station going around the moon. That's okay. big part of this mission. A lot of people don't know about is that a big part of this mission is that it's going to set up a space station orbiting the moon, mm-hmm. which is kind of cool when you think about it. We've got a space station. We've had people living in space for more than 20 years around the Earth. You don't think about it. So it's kind of like it's kind of like something you kind of take for granted. But for the last 20 years, there's been human presence in space nonstop for, for that long. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's saying something. Yeah, but, but uh, I think it's also important... To make the audience realize that this is the first of several sequences where they first put this um, uh, satellite, this 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 mobile station, mm-hmm. and then ultimately twelve astronauts will launch from that and land on the moon, and it's a a three part series of uh, of of of, and the third part is for them to set up a base on the moon. Well, the, the so, idea is so like the way they set up the IS the with the different modules. Yeah. Every time they go up, another module is being dis- deployed or, or multi-modules be deployed, whatever. But um, the point is to ultimately set up a base on the moon, and this is the first of three stages. Exactly. And you don't get there by not starting it. Right? So I think it after the Apollo launches, like back in, you know, was the last one in 72 or something like that, um, I think it was a that like the public just like lost interest in it. Hmm. it became like matter of fact. Mm-hmm. And the space shuttle came out, and that was kind of cool. But then a couple of them had accidents. You right, know. but space didn't become interesting after the moon stuff. You know what became interesting? It was very interesting when that the Hubble how? Space Telescope went up. Then it became interesting mm-hmm. because we had pretty pictures to look at. Yeah, the you Hubble know, was awesome. Not you know the the, the whole thing with the the. Uh, co-star and the, uh, the the mirror being off a little mm-hmm, bit mm-hmm. okay but the fact 
that Story Musgrove and his crew went up there and repaired that mother and made it the most and amazing got it thing. to work. All right. Wow, I look, I still look at that as being the one of the most monumental tasks we've ever performed in space as human beings. Mm. As an engineering feat, it was incredible. Oh my goodness! Think yeah. about it. Yeah, it was never designed to be taken apart in space. Right. right. So, that, like, you think about there was like so many little screws. Yeah, they had to design like a plastic thing to put over this thing, and they had to with holes in it. And they had to unscrew and let the, the screws float around in the pl in the plastic uh, like pl case or Container, whatever, right? Right. This stuff it was like literally never done before. Hmm. They when they went to go shut. I don't know if you know the story, but when they went to I go shut it. the doors, <laughs> they couldn't get them shut. Really? Yeah. They, as so the, so they went to fix the Hubble telescope. And they went up there and got the mirrors to work, and now they're going to close this little they went door to thing. Last thing, close the door and put the lock on, right? Okay. And the doors were out of alignment by a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Musgrove says, you guys down, you guys down in Houston ain't going to like this. <laughs> well, he was going to take the door apart, the, right? The guy, the guy in mission control, the, 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 the communicator goes, don't you dare. And he took a... a, a Freaking uh, crowbar! A crowbar, and then popped it in. Really, it's, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> like, really, I don't know. Like, this. Yeah, I don't know like you're kidding me. <laughs> wow. Well, I guess if you look at it, I mean, even the Artemis on the second launch, they're, they're trying all these things. You can read these articles. I'll, I'll you show know who Artemis is, right? So, no. What is what does Artemis refer to? Apollo's sister. Apollo sister, yeah. really Greek like mythology. Greek mythology. Yeah. Uh, what did she do? I don't remember. I her. don't recall exactly what she did, but she was Apollo's sister. Really, yeah. really, Apollo's sister. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna have to read up on that. Yeah, I don't cool, know right? That's all about there. Um, but interesting. So this is the mission that was planned like many years ago, and they're gonna land. Mm -hmm. uh, they're gonna rotate this thing around the moon. Then they're gonna populate it with twelve astronauts. Then they're gonna go to the moon. And they're going to build a base, mm. like, yeah, build a base well, with you, those you big know, circles that we always saw. I look, don't know. If you, if we're going to make it to Mars, right? We're going to have to build a pretty big ship to get to Mars, right? I don't know. Something that can't can be, it like, be a little ship. Why is it a big ship? It's got to be big. It's got to carry. It's not a lot the of fuel. size of the ship. It's how you use it. Oh my God! He really just said that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bro. Uh, <laughs> serious, man. You yeah. got a big rocket, but otherwise, but you got to carry a lot of things. You got okay. you got supplies for quite a few people. I mean, I imagine it's going to be more than three people going. Right, right, um, right, right. right. Like, twelve, we talk, twelve was. We talk about a trip to Mars now, right? Not the moon. Okay, you can't really stage that from the Earth as easily as you could stage it using the Earth and the Moon and having two places to coordinate things, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the whole idea, you know. And, and, and I, it's To great. be able to launch from there as opposed to from Earth without needing all that, right. all that energy. And think sure. about the ship that... The, I, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and guess my way through this, but I think the best way to do this is to build the ship in space. Right. Right? Right. But well, didn't they do that with the International Space Station, if you will? That's they exactly. on to it. The modules, yeah. So what's happening with the ISS? Is that uh, being disassembled? Is that over? No, no. They're still, still ticking along. It's still doing fine. Um, but uh, Russia's pulling out, they said. Let them. But Russian was really, um, if you read the articles, carrying a lot of weight up there. Yeah. They were because um, the powers that be down here uh, allowed them to. I mean, think about it. Uh, Obama took the space shuttle offline and you know d d depreciated it, and we were we had to pay the Russians to get to the space station. They were, we were hitching rides on their rockets on, on Soyuz rockets, right? Which is, uh, I think, Elon Musk is now uh, the transport oh, yeah. uh, vehicle instead. So you don't think that was by design? Think about it. We knew Musk was going. to get better with his rockets even mm -hmm. though like there's some first spectacular failures when he tried to land you know the reusable rockets and mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. but like anything else you, you do it enough times you get better at it mm -hmm. right? good point good point point. and 
So a couple of unmanned missions, you know, with the uh, oh, I forget what they call yeah. it, the, uh, 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 um, bring supplies, a, su a supply, okay, right, store, like a supply right? truck, supply spaceship. Hey, you know that worked. That worked, right? Yeah, right. Um, it's I hear you. It's not a bad thing when you've got a guy like Musk or a guy like Richard Branson. You know, to kind of tackle it and take the helm, Jeff if you will. Jeff Bezos, right? Yeah. These guys yeah. got more money. It's, it's funny. Cause remember but I guess because they're involved, they're not going to let the ISS die, if you think about it. You know Did what you I mean? ever see the comedian Louis Black? Yeah, of course. Well, he's a great comedian, right? Yes. He's talking about like, like these like overly like hyper-rich guys in yeah. the skit that he was doing. And, he, and the punchline was... What are you going to do with all that money? Start your own space program. Ah, yeah, exactly. And it was years ago. It was like 10 years ago, 12 years ago. And I think about it now. It's like, you know, he was right. He probably yeah. gave these guys a good idea. Hmm, um, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Why not? Well, but it's interesting to think. So now that Elon Musk is involved with transporting people back and forth to the ISS, there'll be more of an interest to not let it die and let it continue and possibly even bid on take over some of the technology that the Russians were doing on there. I think we need to pour a little bit more money into NASA to not only have them um, develop the, the 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 SLS, you know, the space launch system that they they you know they currently right. you know trying right. to get right. Right. right now. Yeah. Um, but we should also dump money into a smaller kind of rocket, like a Saturn One B. Remember the, yes. the smaller one that used, used to shuttle people back and forth to Skylab. I'm telling you, smaller shuttles is the key, bro. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. know what I mean. Um, I have an interesting um, screen here. So a couple of weeks ago, the James Webb Telescope went up, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, you want to talk about the James Webb and what they're up to today? Absolutely. Um, well, the, the, the Webb Telescope um, recently discovered, um, I think it was the first images yes. that we got of exoplanets. Isn't that amazing, right? The first... It's beyond crazy. Why did it do better than the Hubble? What happened? Well, okay, first of all, it's, you know, like, what, 50 times more powerful than the Hubble Telescope. 50 times yeah, more it's powerful? Like, like, it's, like, ridiculously more... Like, when you, you say it's, like, a exponents better... Gone. Than the Hubble. Okay, it's looking in in like the Hubble's looking in uh, visible light. Right. This is looking in ultraviolet, um, infrared. Um, it's 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 seen in visible light, but it's also expanding you know its parameters okay. to view more and different kinds of light. Okay, at different wavelengths. Is Hubble going away because of the James Webb, or Hubble's, is it also going to be used? Hubble's going away because it's thirty years old. Just old tech yeah, at this point. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's like it it did a great job. It its mission lasted many, many years longer than it was mm -hmm. ever expected to. Yeah. Um, when you got our pics, we got a bang for our buck with that thing. Yeah, when you see the pics of the James Webb Telescope, it's just so much clearer than what you could do, and they're playing... And we were astounded by the Hubble, yeah. right? I mean, think of that. The Hubble takes that Hubble deep field picture, right? They, they point it at a piece of sky about the size of a dime. You held it like, you <laughs> know, like at arm's length, right? Actually, it was smaller than that. It was like tenth of a dime right um more like a match head yeah right? yeah and this they pointed it at that because there was nothing there nothing our there. telescopes right. on the ground couldn't see anything uh -huh. there and we just left the camera open you know we left the aperture open and we let the thing you know take in light for i, I think it was like a hundred hours really was hours, it okay a long time okay and what did they discover 10,000 new galaxies we had never seen before. Wow, that's a big, big difference, really. Now, what the, the Webb Telescope did the same thing. It just took a deep field image, too. Mm -hmm. One-tenth the sky, okay, smaller patch of sky, by one-tenth that the Hubble did. Mm -hmm. And it found galaxies that we don't understand why they exist. They're too far away. Mm. Now we're starting to see. Is it explaining some of the empty space okay. that we thought was empty, but is not it's really not, empty? It's at not all. really empty. Yeah, interesting. It, it, the, the funny thing is, is you know they talk about the observable universe, right? Yes. Well, our observable universe just opened up a little bit, mm. and we can see stuff oh, that we point. couldn't see before. Good point. Right. Um, I got into an interesting conversation with uh, my ex drummer. Well, you know the drummer yeah. who used to play in Rock of Ages. Yeah. And uh, 
he he and I went back and forth on Facebook a little bit about you know extraterrestrials okay. and right. what the Aliens. possibility is of life existing on other planets, and, and he's like he's like the kind of person like he says yeah I'm sure there's life out there, but there ain't no way they cross tens of millions of light years mm, to, to okay. make trips too and big I, of a distance. And I said to him, "Why do you think about something? 150 years ago, people didn't fly on planes." Mm. And 150 years in in any kind of like time scale, it's like it's like a Big plank difference. time. Okay, Good it's point. like a billionth of 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 a second. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. 150 years, nothing. Yeah, as, as quick as you blinked your eyes, came and went. 150 years in it. What's the big in yeah, the big picture? Exactly. Yeah. Like I love what Carl Sagan did back in the uh, mm. Cosmos uh, presentations. Billions and billions. He never actually said that. That's the funny thing. He never actually oh, said Oh, really? I thought that, that was... It's like, beam me up, Scotty. Like, really? Like, never ever, ever said oh, that. Oh, it's one of those social It's like things. one of those things. Like, uh, bo um, Bogey uh, yeah. never said what... Uh, uh, what the hell yeah. did they say? Well, hold on one second. Anyway. I want to pull up a screen here of what's happening with James Webb. Let's okay. see if I can do this. Um, there it is. Now, just move back a little bit there. Move, just move your body back a little bit. Okay, right there. Now it's right here. It's right there. Take a look. The James Webb's first images. Now it's really interesting what I can do on this website. Um, these are amazing. Right, you see that? Take a look. Um, amazing pictures on the James Webb's website. There's a section where we can zoom in and out. So I wanted to pull up the cosmic cliffs there. And uh, we actually have the ability here, folks, to zoom in and out of this photo. Now, that's amazing stuff. What, that looks so much clearer than what you had before. Very much so. Very much so. Um, the clarity is astounding in the images coming from that telescope. Now, this is pointing at uh, which... Rosette Nebula, it looks like. Yes, yes. Isn't that uh, inside Orion? Yeah, I believe so. All right, so this is pointing right inside Orion there. And uh, take a look at what we have. We can do. Look at these amazing pictures. 50 times more data, huh? That's a lot of data. I mean, you know, you, you ever... Um, work with uh, radiologists sure and like you know MRI images yeah. and CAT scan images you know they're not like you know like your monitor like 1024 768 they're enormous right yeah. so the, the, the images coming back from this thing are like in pixel width and length enormous wow you know so you can play things like that you can like zoom in with exceptional clarity um, which is also, because Incredible. some of the stuff that they set up, they did they did deeper field and you know, deeper field and closed the gap, so you, you see it like morph through that. Look um, at that! Incredible! It is incredible. You know, and they give this ability right on the site to zoom in and out. I thought that was brilliant. So, like, you know? going back to what I was saying about the uh, you know like that 150 years. Yeah. You remember when Carl Sagan talked about like the galactic calendar? Yes. Right, and like at. January, eight, uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, January 1st, the Big Bang happened. Yes. Right? And we get to, just like, the last minute of the last day in December 31st, right? And for a tenth of a half of a second, mankind has existed in that whole calendar. So so what are we looking at here? These are, these are gas... Uh, coming out of the center here. And that's, a, that's, a star, that's a star nursery. That's a star nursery. Mm -hmm. Can you describe this a little bit more and why well, it looks like this? The, the star formation is just is, is something that we think we know a lot about. Uh, basically, you know, the hydrogen gas, uh, different different inert gases are out in the uh, out in the universe, mm -hmm. along with dust and and you know, matter from previous star explosions and things like that. They gather because gravity will just start pulling things together. Mm -hmm. Interesting experiment they did on the ISS. They just took a, a Ziploc bag and they put coffee grinds in it. <laughs> okay. It's so simple, right? And they, they just put it and they hung it somewhere and they just watched it. And what happened was 
all by themselves, the coffee grinds clump together, right? Okay. In space, when you, you know, you're essentially weightless, gravity has a, a stronger force than you would think, like, you know, gravity, you know, you fall out of your bed or fall off a ladder, you right. know that gravity works, right? But in the formation of celestial bodies, like stars and things like that, think about a lot of material out there. Okay. And all of a sudden it starts clumping together because it's gravity starts attracting particles and now you've got a clump of stuff that has more mass than everything around it like this and it grabs more this is the what is it called the some nebula looks like the dumbbell nebula the southern ring nebula southern ring nebula okay very similar um looks like it looks like uh the aftermath of a star exploding wow and it looks like a neutron star in the middle wow yeah, you know, that's amazing. So, neutron star meaning the remnants, <laughs> the, the inner core remnants of an exploded star. Mm -hmm. So, this is uh, years and years later that we're seeing this. This is very past tense. Oh yeah, uh, you, you pull up an image of the Crab Nebula, right? Mm -hmm. Crab Nebula was um, able. You you were, when that went off when that that happened was I think uh, seven or eight hundred years ago. Wow, um, it was visible during the daytime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's paintings on uh, uh, walls in uh, southern New Mexico, I think it is, okay. like, where the, the local Indian civilizations were living. Okay. And they drew a picture of it, of yeah, the yeah. event. And Chinese astronomers also recorded it, too. Mm -hmm. This is called the Stevens Quintet. I don't know if you've seen this. Called the Stevens Quintet of three galaxies, I guess, swimming around each other. I was reading about that. That's amazing. Look at the amount of star formation. That's the uh, Damn, these pictures are crazy, man. The, in a couple of million years, that's what us, you know, the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy are going to look like from way off in the distance. Wow, look at this. I love spending time on this website. These pictures are sick, man. Isn't it cool? Really, what a great website there. Did you realize just how absolutely small we are? They've done such a great job. And uh, I love the way they're displaying this so we can all look at it, you know. Um, there's a Southern Ring Nebula, the Wasp Ring, I'm not sure what that is. First Deep Field. First Deep Field. Let's look at, let's zoom in on this one. I guess this is the first thing they found, huh? You see, now I just want to say something about this. You see Wasn't the there in the Deep Field? No, hold on. Wasn't there a dude who took pic a picture of his granite countertop and passed it as the deep field yep. thing? Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Put a little out of focus. <laughs> so this is what it first captured, huh? That looks pretty crazy. Isn't it, isn't that great? Wow! Look at look at the depth on that. That's I love how cool the, stuff. the the dark matter, yeah, is like doing the gravitational lensing. On, mm. on, the, on the view. So that's what that is. That's dark matter doing gravitational lensing. Yeah, because yeah, that light that's coming towards us is being affected by matter, mm. by, by gravity. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, you know, that old, like, you know, put the straw in the water, in the, you know, the mm. glass of water, and it looks like the straw's broke, mm -hmm. you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Only, you know, on a different kind of scale. Now, I remember seeing science from about a year or two ago saying that the universe our universe is expanding uh sort of in layers or not ex not directly in there's um uh, almost look like a butterfly if you will the way the planets in the universes are expanding to each other it's but that's like not the case now with the james webb i think they found that that was incorrect and in fact it is expanding evenly we just couldn't see there it's it, it's so weird to talk about expansion um, because it's space itself that's expanding, huh? You know, mm -hmm. it's you know, it's it's kind of hard to wrap your head around sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if the universe is supposedly fourteen billion years old, then how come we can see a, a galaxy that's thirty six billion light years away? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? okay, because of expansion. Because of expansion. Yeah, yeah. But you're seeing the past. What does that have to do with it? You're seeing something. Well, you that see, the light the took. It, let's say so. Let's put, let's put in a little bit more uh, understandable numbers. You're seeing something a hundred light years away, right? Mm -hmm. What you're seeing is what that looked like a hundred years ago. Okay. 
Okay, goes, that's how long it took the light to get to your eye uh, or to get to that picture. Okay. 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 Got it. Um, so you, you really, it's, it's not like you're, you're time traveling. Mm -hmm. It's that just simply that you're looking at light that took that long to get to you. Mm. So you talk about exoplanets. You said it exponentially found more exoplanets. What is this chart, the WASP-96 exoplanets, um, that they're fi they found exponentially more? How is this graph well, being this, used, if you will? Now that when we find planets, because we're finding planets through several different methods, um, now that we now that we find uh, planets, we've got this extraordinary telescope. To, hey, let's point it at that thing and see if we can't catch an image of it. Now, what can we get by that? Light, which is incredibly useful to figure out what's there, hmm. right? So you, you can take the light, put it through a spectrometer, and say, with that light that we received, we saw these uh, compounds and these molecules, and that's what the atmosphere around that planet is made out of. And when we find oxygen and nitrogen in, in, you know, in the right amounts, that could be an Earth's planet. You know, it could be just like us. So in this graph where they're measuring exoplanets, they're measuring the amount of light that's coming out that they were not able to see before in, in, in all spectrums, in just one spectrum of light? It's an expanded spectrum happening? from the Hubble Space Telescope. You're talking about an expanded spectrum. The, the Hubble Space Telescope, you know, has got, you can see the Roy G. Biv, you know, the, the, uh, the, color the colors of the spectrum, right? This telescope can see beyond that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's important because you, you, the more light you take in, the more light that you can detect and work with, the more you can learn about the thing you're studying. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And opening it up as much as, it, as, as we did with this telescope, I mean, it's just like brilliant technology, mm -hmm. it really is. Mm -hmm. I mean, just the whole thing. Look, it's just the way it deployed flawlessly. Mm -hmm. It you know, speaks to really, really terrific engineering. Wow, excellent. So people should be really thinking about the discovery of exoplanets and how that's being measured. That's kind of a critical part of well, the The argument I was having with my drummer that, uh, on Facebook was basically, it's like, why are we looking for these things? We ain't never going to go there. We don't, we will never, he's saying, No, we're, we're looking for a planet that can harbor life, isn't the point? And what happens when we find it? What do we do? We're going to make a spaceship, a, a small one, and go there. You would think so, right? How can you make a small spaceship and go five light years away? Well, uh, they're still working on that. Part. If, if, if you go, let's, let's say, think about it. If you, if you go at 0.999% mm -hmm. of the speed of light, mm -hmm. and you go to Proxima Centauri, which is our closest star neighbor, okay, okay. it's going to take you about four years to get there four years to come back that ship's got to be big mm, it's got to carry a lot live. of grub okay you got to live on you got to eat yeah you yeah, know yeah. you you, you got you, you have things that you got to do you can't just be sitting there like with your cell phone going oh, i wish i'd get a better uh wi-fi connection <laughs> yeah think about it for a second you you got to be entertained you have to do stuff you, you have to do stuff to you exercise isn't that what they do in you're not going to sit there and exercise, exercise for five bike. years Okay? Seriously. You know, the treadmill will get a little old. And there's other things you need. You can't be floating. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Like they do in the space station. Mm. Remember I've talked with you about this. Mm. We need a ship that's actually got the ability, the, or the, the feature, let's say, mm. Mm -hmm. where the floor has got gravity plates. Okay. Okay. A, a, a controllable, powered technology where... 66 quadrillion tons of mass is generated in one direction. Think about it like a like a, a piece of plywood, let's say. You put that on the floor. And whatever you built into that piece of plywood, right, generates that gravitational mass that's that going to create gravity mm -hmm. in one direction because you don't want it going in both directions because the people on the floor below you, on the mm -hmm. deck below you, are going to mm -hmm. stick to the ceiling, and that's mm -hmm. kind of useless. Sure, and then what do you sure. do when you got three, four, five, six, seven decks? It's mm -hmm. kind of confusing, right? Mm -hmm. the, the whole idea is we'll figure out a way to tune that so that each deck will have proper gravity. We won't turn to jello on the trip. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. But, you know, to sit there and say, oh, that's science fiction. 
don't write it off so fast. <laughs> the stuff that they're working on over at the Large Hadron Collider, tearing into things like the Higgs boson particle, the particle that gives mass mass. Now you think about this for a second. Well, hold on. I just want to. We check. just discovered that very recently. Yeah. Right. We know nothing about it. We we know a few things about it, but we literally Among have all the world's problems. They've invested in the in in these things by the billions over many years. Trillions, actually. Right. Yeah. I mean, everybody's like, "Well, why should we invest in the Artemis and moon travel?" And meanwhile, Brookhaven National Labs is how many billions of dollars? Trillions. They've been investing in this heavy technology for years. Yeah, of course. While ignoring some of the world problems. You're never... Come a little closer if you don't mind. Oh, sure. You're never going uh, to solve all the world's problems. Anyone anyone who thinks that they're solving... Or that they, no, no, kind of but, plan, but you would think that, you look, know... The, the, the guys that wanted to solve all the whole world's problems... Guys like Hitler and Stalin and Mao, okay? <laughs> Believe me, this, this stuff, it just doesn't work. You can't solve all the world's problems. Here's what you can do. You can make bold technological leaps because technology will improve the human condition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is, you, know, you know me. I'm the kind of geek that, what do you do on the weekends? I do not even go near a computer on the weekends. Right. I'm out yes. on the boat. I'm catching fluke, yeah. okay? I'm catching shark. I'm catching tuna. I don't want it talk about computers <laughs> on the weekend. Yeah. I make my living with computers. That's what I do for work, okay? What, you know, they asked me on an interview one time, I was going for a job interview, this very nice lady said, well, what do you like to do in your own spare time? And I was like, anything that doesn't have to do with computers. And she looked at me like, like, wow, that's kind of weird. I was like, well, you were expecting me to say, oh, I sit and build my com computers <laughs> and I, I, I geek off and I play, you know, games. I go, no. I'm the kind of guy that likes to go for a hike. I, I'm the kind of guy that likes to take his bike out. I'm the kind of guy that likes to go on a boat and go in the ocean. Right, right. You see me on a Saturday in front of a computer, I'm getting paid a lot to do right, that. Right, right, right. Okay. There's an emergency that you're managing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I would say a lot of professional, um, high-end, real care and computer guys kind of live their lives that way where they disconnect on the weekends. Yeah, to dude, they you know, it's the only way to keep your sanity. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen... I just can't like like get into a conversation with friends of mine and go, "Hey man, did you see the storage array I built in my house?" <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Go oh, f yourself." Yeah, you know, <laughs> there's, there's some guys who like talking like that. about that. I, yeah. I mean, I do talk about it sometimes. <clears throat> yeah, it's honest. cool, but you know, I mean, to, to me, uh, spending time with friend, my family, my girlfriend, my son, you know. That's more important to me. Agreed. Okay, agree. And I tried to explain it to that nice young lady in the interview. And I did not get the job. <laughs> no, but it's really interesting because I think that one of the things I was pushing on the show is, look, we've got problems in schools, our kids being affected, yet we're spending billions on technology. You seriously want and, to open up uh, the door? And, uh, but 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 in my opinion, it it makes sense on both ends. You, you can want to open up the door about what's happening to our kids <clears throat> in schools today. But hold on, the the point of this show was that yes, you're getting hacked. There's problems on Earth. It has equal value <clears throat> to build space-bearing things in advanced here's, culture while we're trying to fix the cyber problem. Here's what you're never going to get rid of by any means necessary. Bad people. You're never going to get rid of people who are inherently bad. What They see something, your pocket bulging, they want what's in it, and they'll do anything they can to get it. You leave a $20 bill on the table, you come back 20 minutes later, that $20 bill is gone. There is going to always be, no matter what kind of technology, no matter what we're doing, bad people. Mm -hmm. George Burns played God in the movie Old God. <laughs> yes. and, he, and, and John Denver says, what's your biggest regret? Right? He goes, pockets. Because the second you made pockets, you had something. You had to put something in them. Ah, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> that's that is like brilliant, brilliant. A lot of people don't right. remember George Burns, but those are some great movies where he played God. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you know, know some with three of them. Yeah, I oh think God, three. Oh God, Book Two, and Oh God, You Devil. Yeah, right. long forgotten movies. Yeah, I would think. great stuff. I got to pull Terry those out of the archives. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know, she, never, I never got tired of looking at her. That, that, that Star Trek episode with her and Gary Seven when they were interfering with the launch of the, of the nuclear platform yes, that they were yes, launching, right? That. that was one of my favorite Star Trek episodes. It was on the other night. It seems like Gene Roddenberry really had a, 
uh, a knack for understanding where we're going to possibly go with all of this yeah, stuff. Yeah, because he hung out with aliens. Hmm, you know, the whole majestic twelve thing. You know, he was. He was you involved think he with hung somebody. out with aliens? Oh, he definitely was involved with. Somebody. Or he more was able he to was, remote he was like in the room when the conversations. Or were was he remote viewer, which is possible? He was in the room when the conversations were being had. Hmm. You know, okay. and and that's that's been documented. Hmm. And he got a lot of his ideas from talking to well, uh, what was that uh, the alien? That supposedly had conversations with Eisenhower. Yeah, yeah. Right? That um, I had it saved in my phone. Yeah, uh, I think it was after he had a few drinks. No, no. They, supposedly, there's a guy, and the guy's in pictures, right? Um, give me one second. I'm gonna actually. He may have been on the beach having some drinks in Maui or well, something. Well, there's nothing uh, wrong with having bartender, a drink in Maui, bro. Short bartender came up to him and he's like, "Oh, you're looking a little green, buddy." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess uh, you could put spin on all this stuff. Right? Valiant Thor was the guy's name. Valiant Thor. Valiant Thor. And supposedly this guy was an alien. And he was in pictures with JFK Jr. And uh, Eisenhower. And he, like, never got old. Mm -hmm. All right? Um, there's also, like, of course, a rock band named themselves Valiant Thor, and everybody in the band has Thor as the last name. I like yeah. it. I like it. Very good. One of those kind of metal nice, bands. Nice. <laughs> it works. It works. It works. I hear you. Um, oh, very interesting. Let, let, let's tie it all together. We're getting to the end of the show. Mm -hmm. It's quite an interesting take on all this. So um, definitely something to look forward to is the Artemis and what's going on. Yeah. And we shouldn't be watching it feeling guilty hey look i've got all these problems i i i feel guilty watching advanced space stuff because i should be worrying about the world when when it's the perfect thing to get your mind off of your worries for a few minutes thank right you, thank you this is why i'm such good friends with ed eisenstein so well, we have to tie it back together well because the point is not to feel bad and stress about no it. you don't it's it's it, it's inspiring watching america get back out in space mm -hmm. i mean it's we should have never left. Um, I'm sorry. We did. We did. The government did no good works while we weren't running space shuttles. Wasn't it so uniting for everybody to sit in front of the tube and see those videos? Yeah, but I just mean, like how getting, inspiring. Just like everyone we know, and just like every single human being in the world, we got attention spans that about like a gerbil okay <laughs> yeah. and they're like by the you know by the apollo 13 you remember the movie apollo 13 they go to do the, the the their podcast from you know the from the lunar module and they're nobody watching i dream a genie's on and the mom's <laughs> the mom sitting there going what's wrong with this tv guide right uh, it, it, uh americans um people in general they see something once Eh, you know, the, 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 it's, it's not as interesting as it was the second <laughs> or the 34th time, you know? It's like, oh, another rocket's going on. Fan fantastic. And that's what happened, right? America lost interest in the space race yeah, after a while. I think you would have been more interested if you would have actually been at the Cape and, like, been in the audience watching it go up. Hmm. Because I think the Dallas show took over how interesting, wasn't it? it was some other TV. I, that and the Love Boat and, you know, things like Sure, yeah. yeah because... Yeah. You, 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 you went from the the space, the space to the plane, the plane. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, I, I guess, I guess, you know, <coughs> had they made the love boat like a a spaceship love boat, it would have been a whole different scene. No. Maybe, maybe the little guy would have been Yoda. Look, look, spaceships. spaceships. I think, I think Captain Kirk did quite a few episodes where it was like the love boat yes. out in space. You know? Yes, yes, he was. You know, yes, that's on. true. The, I guess, I guess. Um, they did some of that stuff. It was like a yeah. little love boat conversion. Yeah, yeah. You know, he had to, he had a couple of girlfriends on the show. It's, it's, it, I, I loved uh, Galaxy Quest. Yeah, uh, Alan. Uh, Alan. Oh, uh, Galaxy Quest is a is a is a lost wonder. People haven't realized how right? great of a movie. Galaxy it's like, oh, you Quest finally is. got the chance to take off your shirt. <laughs> so, Galaxy Quest is a is a spoof <laughs> on Star, Star Trek, Trek yeah. right? Totally worth seeing. Yep. One of my favorite scenes in that movie is they're they're all sort of like dying in the background. The air's being sucked down. The engineer gets yeah. on. He goes, um, "They're dying over here. Can you guys uh, do something?" He's yeah, all like, like very old, like no problem yeah. about. Maybe get some WD forty and open the door. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tony Shalhoub was brilliant. Yeah, he was a great, 
great great movie there but uh I'm anyway tech master chen i'm a guy i'm an actor <laughs> definitely yeah, I'd recommend checking it out but uh thank you I, I i just want to leave the show saying that it's important to understand what's happening in cybersecurity. watch out for your kids but check out the artemis check out what's happening in space these pictures always are a amazing. pleasure my friend always a pleasure and uh and and how is our discoveries of these exoplanets going to change our lives here on Earth? Right? That's a good question. I'd love to figure that one out. I wish I could get people like Dawn to, you know, my buddy Dawn, to actually understand that this is good, positive stuff moving forward, you know? Yes, the space race is positive. It's not taking away from uh, what's happening on Earth, which is what a lot of people think is happening. It's taken away from fixing things, feeding the poor. It's just you want, you, you want to keep a problem going just put the government in charge of getting rid of it like the <laughs> la uh school hack that just took place how about huh? drugs how about nancy any, reagan had to get just going, say no right? just say no go and tell i think drug addiction went up by uh 200 in those years in the reagan use yeah 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 like uh, cocaine use like quadrupled so here's the president's wife talking about don't do drugs yet it's coming in like by the the kilo, and ain't nobody stopping it. Okay, if we if we've got the greatest uh, navy in the world by far, like by a lot, we could still patrol around the world and protect our own borders, mm -hmm. but we refuse to. Is that why SpaceX has a better chance of survival? Because it's a private organization. It's it, it, it's a capitalistic venture. It's they're there to make money. That once we figure out a way, and here's where it's going to really go kaboom, okay? Once Elon Musk figures out a way to get a rocket up to an asteroid, mine it, bring it back here. Oh, look, we got 25,000 pounds of gold. They say that the minerals on these asteroids are incredible, more than Earth could have ever had. Yeah. As a matter of fact, could have been mined before. Imagine we land on an asteroid, and there's there's stuff that's been mined there from other races before. Who knows? I, well, I don't know about that, but here's the thing. Just the raw materials. I mean, it would be, be really interesting to find something from an ancient civilization, no doubt. And a cool thought. Um, but I, th I think just, you know, just from raw materials standpoint, you know, how many holes can we dig in the earth? Yeah. If, you know, before we, st you know, that that's. Yeah. Yeah. If we can get our materials from out there, game over, man. I mean, that if it becomes financially viable to go out to the asteroid belt, grab a, a, a ton, a couple of tons of stuff, bring it back here. We can make money doing that. If what, the booty we bring back costs more than doing the trip, that's it. How do we assure human greed won't won't take that? Oh man! And we're, listen, Star come Trek on, that's that the too. problem. We are Ferengi, you know. In Star Trek, we, we you know the humans were the best people around, right? And the Ferengi, they were like capitalistic, you know, the the rules of acquisition. <laughs> we're the Ferengi. That is a joke on us, okay? And you know what? I love the rules of acquisition. Mm, I have most okay. of them memorized. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> And, and, and they're all great, okay? Capitalism works. I still believe in what Ayn Rand said about capitalism, the unknown ideal, because you give someone... Capitalism is an incentive for you to get great mm -hmm. and live comfortably while you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Money, having a nice lifestyle, is a reward. You're incentivizing doing great things. Yes. You don't get guys like Elon Musk to exist, Without capitalism, there are none of them in Russia or China. There's lots of very rich people. Well, they say but they have the oligarchs like this guy. So, so he uh, there's this, no oligarchs this like rich him. Dudes because there's always going to be one guy that gets rich off a bunch of other people, and he inherits it from his dad. Okay, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what happens. It, what made Elon Musk Elon Musk wasn't the fact that he wanted to get rich. That happened as a byproduct. Mm -hmm. I see what you, you know, mean. Like so what he did is he made PayPal, right? Yes. It, you know, and 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 sold it, right? What do you do? You make something really great, you're gonna run it? No. Sell it. Yeah. yeah. Made a ton of dough on that, right? Yeah. yeah. Walks yeah. away from that and like, what what's the next thing I can do? Mm. He wasn't thinking about what's the next thing I could do, like, oh my god, I'm unemployed, I need some I need a job. Right. He no, that's thinking, not what inspired him. Exactly. He wanted to think 
like bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. Right? yeah. He always was like that. You listened to him from years ago, right? He was always like that. He was a little on the but hold on a second. A little on the the, the Asperger scale or something like that, right? But 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 even in in Russia, wasn't Russia technically the first group in space? So that was not capitalists getting up there first. Let me tell you what Russia did. That's a, you're probably not going to read anywhere. Uh, it's not something that they published. Um, they lost a few people, and they never told many people about it. We know there was a Russian cosmonaut whose capsule coming back in bounced and went off into space. Really? And there were people like running ham radios and stuff that caught the guy speaking in Russian saying goodbye to the world. Like, you know. And knew, so like, you knew think there's a, it was a lot worse than we know? Way worse than we know. Way worse. The Russians, ruthless people. I, listen, I have many friends who are Russian. You know, I, I, I respect Russian history. I think they've got a long, rich... Uh, history, but let me tell you something. You don't. But beat, look at Mir. Look at Mir. They had Mir up there. You don't beat Hitler in World War Two the way they did without being ruthless mm -hmm. as hell. Okay, mm -hmm. like these these people when they're determined to do a thing, you ain't stopping them. Mm -hmm. Okay, Russia lost more people in World War Two than all the other sides combined, like times two. Okay, you, you think about how many people they lost. Add up Japan and United States and England and Germany and everybody else. So you're saying they were willing to give up lives upon lives to be first? Not to be first. To win. To be able to be standing on, on Hitler's dead body with, with Stalin's boot on his chest and saying, yeah, I won. Well, I mean regarding the space race. They were in, the space, willing... in the space race, they, they didn't care. They wanted, to, they wanted to be first. Getting to the moon... They were just as ruthless as in the war yeah, getting yeah, to yeah. space. Did you, like, they were ahead of us the whole way. Think about it. We, we were so, we were behind them, like by leaps and bounds, through the whole beginning of space race. Yuri Gagarin is orbiting the Earth, and we can't even, like, get a rocket off the pad. Okay? Literally, we couldn't get a rocket up in the air. We didn't have the technology. They put their rocket out there. I forget what's the name of that first rocket they had. Mm -hmm. They had like 19 engines underneath it. Yes, it looked yes. like something out of Buck Rogers. <laughs> but you know what? It worked. It, it worked. worked. You know, they, they got Sputnik up there. All Sputnik did was send a radio signal and go beep, beep, beep. That's all it did. But they were first. And in the news, it seemed like they were beating the U.S. And they were first to the moon mm -hmm. with a probe. Okay? Yes, they yes. were first to Venus with a probe. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now... The, the 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 technological chutzpah that you need to walk someone on the moon was just a little bit beyond them. Yeah, you know, they just couldn't get the whole thing worked out. I got to think about this for a second. So Russia did a lot of trial and error, ultimately losing a bunch of humans in the process. Yeah. Oh yeah. But uh, to some degree, America losing a lot of people who saw this and, and learned from this, and then did it without. The them. Americans didn't want to lose lives, right? The Americans did everything they could to not lose lives. Mm -hmm. Apollo One, the fire in the capsule, mm -hmm. that was a horrible tragedy. What did they do? They said, "Screw it, We're starting over." They reworked the command module mm -hmm. from scratch. I mean, like you know, it's like kind of like the seventy nine vet. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's exactly. like this thing sucked. We need to f we need to put this back on the drawing board. Yeah, yeah, and that, you know, the putting the safety first and all that stuff. The Russians, you know, they weren't as concerned. Let's just say, right. it was like they were human concerned, but capital. Yeah, it was like it was a little bit more expendable. Mm -hmm. You know, in their eyes, you know, like you know, and the Russians were happy to do it. Like happy, you know, happy to like give my life for you know for the, for the betterment of you know my country. Are they still operating that way based on what you see in the results of the current war? I don't know. I don't know. That's 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 almost like you know political talk. I you know yeah. like, I don't even. I don't know. Well, I've even heard, even in space, they're blowing up each other's satellites as tests currently. Yeah, the Chinese are loving doing that. Um, they're making more space to breathe than you know, like anybody, like times ten. Right, but the Russians are blowing things up, or uh, almost like they're testing out some kind of laser. They are or something. testing out some kind of lasers. They're testing all kinds of things. Okay, there's lots of things that you're not hearing about that are going on. I don't, and let's face it, this administration isn't going to be too forthright you know, and forthcoming to tell you all about it. Mm. They want to keep it covered up because they want everybody to relax 
and vote Democrat in the next election. Yeah, but hold on. They're letting us know about aliens. I mean, isn't that part of disclosure already? This is kind of weird. They didn't tell us about aliens. They had some footage that they couldn't explain. They brought it to Congress, and everybody said, I got no idea. Mm. That wasn't telling us about aliens. Interesting. They didn't come out and say, hey, those things you see, those grays, you know, with the big eyes and no mouth, you know, whatever, you know, the weird nose, you know. That's um, not the disclosure as we understand nah, disclosure ought to be? Nah. nah. Listen, we know that Area 51 has got alien technology there. Yes. There's just no two ways about it. Yeah. Along the way, our government picks some shit up yeah. and put it in, uh, put it in underground there. You got to remember, what's under the ground that you can't see in Area Fifty One is way bigger than what's mm. what, you, what they're seeing from uh, Google Earth. Got okay? it. Got it. And what they depicted in uh, on the uh, what was it, uh, the movie with uh, Data played the scientist uh, Brent Spiner. Okay. Played the scientist uh, Independence Day. Okay, yes, yes, you of know? course. Oh, you guys want to see the big tamale? Oh, yeah, yeah. Was, I love that movie, the original. But you, when you, you you think about it, it's probably almost that simple. You know? And, 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 and Brent Spiner saying, you know, we know lots about their technology. We know lots about them. You know? We probably know quite a bit about things that nobody wants to admit that we know quite a bit about. Because it breaks the religious model. That's what everybody's worried about. <laughs> this, po this, this model that was created around, there are uh, people around religion as opposed to now you can replace that religious thing with the okay. space race. Let's, but let's, you're going to have to let the cat out of the bag. Let's no? not even get into the religion thing. But let's, but let's, let's step back from religion. And, and I, I don't want to say because I'm not a religious person. I don't believe in a man up in the sky. But I'm agnostic. I'm not an atheist. I'm agnostic. I'll sit here and hedge my bet and say, if there is one, I'm going to act, you know, I'm going to run my life so he doesn't get too pissed at me, okay? Right, with general morals. With general morals and just like try to be, you know, a decent human being and not be a dick, right? Um, on the flip side of that, um, I find it hard to believe in a dude who lives in the sky and will damn us to eternal damnation in, in, in fire and sulfur if we do something bad, okay? I don't know. It sounds like a cool story, though. But like in George on. Carlin's words, but he loves you. <laughs> and he needs money. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> I, just, I, I just find some things hard to swallow because I'm a bit more of a scientist and I need a little bit of proof. Have we learned so much about ourselves and technology that we can let go of the security blanket of religion in a way? You hear what I'm saying? No, no, no. There are people out there, and you know this, I know this. They and need that blanket. No, that's, there's, let's talk. There's a whole conversation that we could do a whole show on the people that need the blanket. But let's talk about for one second people who actually believe the earth is flat. Hmm. Now, this is a special kind of moron. You know, a special kind, like you have made up your own reality because it makes you feel good. Wow, does that sound like anything we've heard before? No, they've come up with cool facts that kind of point that this could be possible. It's, it, look, a lot of things could be possible. Shut up. You know, enough. People walking around, like, talking about this stuff, like, like people having fights with people. No, the world has to be flat. Good God. Like, just, oh, you know... This, this it's guy, conspiracy to a whole nother level. Yeah, it's saying there's that, a guy on TikTok <laughs> that goes around asking man on the street questions. Who Mark Dice? I, I forget his name. Mark Dice. He's awesome. And to every answer, he goes yes, and he looks into the camera. Is that the guy? Oh yes, yeah. yeah. He's, he'll ask, "Who is the first president of the United States? What country is Mount Rushmore in?" Yes, exactly. I've seen it. Mark you know, Dice. Okay, brilliant, yes. brilliant. But what's really brilliant? Is the level of absolute staggering stupidity. I really thought that, you know, it's not every person. But he said in an interview, it's the majority of people he talks to. Right, right. I mean, how many dimes in a dollar? These people what? have no idea, but uh, they're going to school. can't answer the question they're, like that. How do they not know? What these? country is Hawaiian? 
Yes. <laughs> I mean, like, like we. Jay Leno used to do that back in the day with the same reaction oh, as yeah, general yeah. people, it's, right? It's, uh, so did uh, Jesse Waters. Yes, yeah, exactly. Like Fox. Yeah. Um, and it kind of makes you think. The level of look, if you're going to sit there and talk about smart things, supposedly, yeah, yes. I think the first thing you need to do is to be smart, is to actually have studied a little bit of what you're talking about. Right, right. Well, if you're being pulled up on the side of the highway and asking a question, you may not have studied history or whatever. Listen, I, yeah, I'm, who's, who's the second president of the United States, the third president? You know, look, when goes know. into the 30s, I'm kind of lost. Well, I'm a naturalized citizen. I had to study that to be allowed to become right, a citizen. Right. But I realized that American citizens don't have that requirement. No, you know, but it's it's. I've always thought about how special it is to be able to recall things out of your head. Um, politics aside, I was flipping through channels this years ago, years ago, and I catch Newt Gingrich. They're, they're, they um, videotaped him teaching a history class at some university. Okay. And he's got the lectern. He's got his notes. Yeah. Like an lectern and notes are sitting over here, right? And he's got his arm on the lectern like this, and he's talking about events that happened like Revolutionary War leading mm -hmm. up to the Revolutionary War. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he just gives it like this dissertation, you know, like a. And he, he just caught me off guard. I'm flicking through channels. I'm like, New Gingrich talking about this? Well, it's kind of interesting. I stayed with it, right? Yeah, yeah. What shocked me was his knowledge of the subject matter. Mm. Yes. He talked about events and people and things like he was there, right. like he was part of it. Like he knew his subject matter so cold. Yes. Yeah. Well, Maybe he got ready for that class, mm, okay? Mm -hmm. But it was like it—it it was long before I became a teacher. Mm, okay, it was years and years ago, right? It was influential, and it kind of inspired me to teach. Wow! You know, I was wow. like, "That's really cool." Like when you know something that well, that you can talk about it with such ease. It's like, wow. Yeah. You know, yeah. he didn't look at his notes once. Yeah. I don't yeah. even think there were notes for the class. They probably were notes for something else. Well, I personally love that, even about the space program. I love going really deep down the rabbit hole, learning yeah. all these different uh, aspects of how an arm works or how yes. this works, you know? Yeah, those, uh, the, the robotic arms. The, the robotic Canada arms, arm. yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Canada did one thing right. You know, they made the Canada arm. Yeah. You know, that and, of course, Where does know, that bacon. focus come from? So I have focus where I enjoy and do that. Other people get bored or tired. I'm not sure no, you know why they, they can't. you know why they can't do it? Because they're just not deep enough they don't care everybody's wrapped up in look at their day-to-day -day bs right it, making the credit card payment making sure that they get their dog out of the dog hospital you know well the things that happen to us every day you know that life okay to a lot of people this is abstract bullshit and it's just like why am i even wasting my brain power with this when i not going to be able to make my mortgage payment this month. Mm. You know, think about mm -hmm. that for a minute. Mm -hmm. You know, there's people going through some stuff. It was a little bit tough for a lot of people to wrap their heads around some of this crap. It's just not important to them. Mm -hmm. You know? I hear you. I hear you. But I guess to some degree you want to look at the world within your scope, but also look outside of that. Isn't it relaxing to think about stuff that's not pertaining to you? Isn't it a way to relax? Yeah, in a way, in a way, yeah, yeah. It, it really is. It, it's. It was a, a funny, a funny exercise that happened to me. Yeah. Uh, years ago, I learned how to ski. Yeah. Yeah. First time I ever did it, right? Me and my wife, we went up to Shawnee Mountain, and mm -hmm. we, like, we, I'm learning how to ski. First time I'm doing it. I came home. I came back to the cabin, looking like I was beat up in a bar fight. <laughs> I mean, I had black and blues all over the You weren't a skier yet, and I, no, I had no idea what I was doing. I. But I had fun, and because my mind spent that day doing different things that I normally did, I noticed something that night, like sitting around the fire having a beer, was that I'm incredibly relaxed. Mm. Even though I could definitely go for an Epsom salt bath and a nice massage, I'm like I was banged up physically, but the mind yes. was in a different kind of place yeah. because I used my brain for different stuff that day.
all day long. You are one of those people who also knows how to f- have fun. I'm meeting more and more people that don't know how to how, how to let go, how to have fun, how to find that one thing that that gets them off track and just relax. Yeah, I know you know, what you mean. you're good at that. You know, Thank what you advice just, do you yeah, have for you the too. audience? Yeah, you, you you got that in you too. Yeah. You know, you you, yeah. you get into things like you know what we're doing now, the podcast. Right. Right. You, when you get into something, you get into something. I yeah. mean, like, and I I, I think that's really cool about you. You you have that ability to immerse yourself into something to the Thank nth you. degree. That's awesome. <laughs> and that's it. That's that's talent, you know, uh, and to be able to take talent and act on it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. A lot of people can't do that. They don't, they don't have the time. They don't have the energy. They don't have the want or desire to do that. Um, look, most people are lemmings. I hate to say it, but a lot of I people study are. I study really complicated stuff that maybe is not that interesting because I know I'll find a gem in there somewhere that's important for me. Right. You know? I think it's... Uh, I think it's an important thing for you to find hobbies, to do things for yourself. Mm-hmm. Like I got, you know, my mm-hmm. fishing, and I like to play poker. You know, I've got these diversions that I mm-hmm. like to have. To me, that's important. Um, to a lot of people, they're like, "Why do you even do that stuff?" Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like, you know, like, what do you do to break the monotony? You know, oh, I go on vacation. Okay, so what happens when you can't go on vacation? Remember, we, I joked about it before. We, we People just, go on vacation and they're working, so that's not fair game all the time. You know, they're I sitting s- out there working while they're ignoring their kids. I said you know? to you before, you, see, you mentioned a vacation. I go... What is this vacation thing yes, you speak yes. of? I've heard some people actually do something called vacation, yeah. but I have no idea what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. I haven't been on a vacation so long. I just... Oh God... I really need to get the hell away. I do. What's interesting, though, is um, we're both hard workers. What's happening in the space program is a great way to get your mind off things. It's a sure, beautiful for, for pictures. A you know, it's kind of get your get your mind off what could be. You know, where where humanity could be if things uh, weren't so <laughs> tied to our everyday problems. I got to tell you, you know, uh, I got to give props to Don, you know, my buddy, because you know, his argument was there ain't no way aliens could make the distance, right? It's just impossible. Okay. And, you know, he's probably right. I mean, like, there's definitely life out there. There's amoebas, right? There's, you know, things crawling around, bugs, you know, animals, whatever they are. Takes a lot for, but not a lot of time, but it takes a lot of things have to fall into place for a civilization to arise. We don't know that yet the folding of space described by Einstein still lives. There's a lot of ways that this can be done, but I mean, think about it, the Earth was just fine for four and a half billion years for most of its life without us. Hmm. And then we popped up in like that last Screw couple of minutes up. of December 31st, right? And we did all this cool shit just in that amount of time, like less, like tenth of a tenth of a tenth of a second before midnight. That is incredible to me. That like there were, f- what, four or five mass extinctions? Mm-hmm. That one of them was so bad, like 95, 98% of all species on the planet yeah. died off yeah. because yeah. of some rock that came down right sure sure well we don't know if we've been uh, told the truth about what happened before these calamities took place i'm going to tell you something i think there was a very advanced civilization that we don't know about before we thought civilization began I so agree. Be and, that. and I gotta tell you, it seems like twelve thousand, thirteen thousand years ago, there was a shift, and right before them, there was a very advanced civilization that clearly did things. That something happened. Um, although the pyramids still are older than that, still. Right. I mean, it, it, it's it, it's kind of crazy to think you know, like the span of time, right? When you think about something, a Tyrannosaurus Rex existed on the planet along with dinosaur fossils. Mm, mm-hmm. A Tyrannosaurus Rex's lifespan in the in the timeline mm. is closer to us today than it was to the Stegosaurus. Wow. Okay. Wow, that's a good point. That's right? a good point. So, massive amounts of time. Okay, like 
unbelievably long long amounts the of time. The time span of all this is unbelievable to humans. I don't think the average person can grasp these Here's time lines, interesting. You, know? you want to hear a good one, too? Cleopatra lived her life closer to the invention of the iPhone than the building of the pyramids. Wow. Look, <laughs> look it up. Wow. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, timelines is uh, is something people are are eludes them on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. um, guys, we're gonna end the show here. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, always looking for more feedback. I hope you got something out of it. Um, for me, I think it was important to realize it's time. It's worth spending time thinking about the subject and yeah. really digging deep. Uh, this next moon landing and having a base on the moon. As uh, I thought about it from a little kid, you know. Always, Thank always you a great very time. Much, guys. Thanks, everyone. Um, have a great evening. Another uh, episode of Cybermasters. Good night, everybody. All right. We're out.